I think there is one big problem with learning grammar. Have you ever tried really hard to learn something, but when you wanted to talk to someone in English, you found it tricky to use what you learned? Today, I'm going to tell you about one thing you don't need to do when you're learning a new language. I'll also share some cool tips on how to study differently and how any level of English learner can benefit from this. Before we start though, let's figure out how good you are at English so you can use my advice in the best way. There are many levels. You might already know your level, especially if a language teacher told you in the past. If you don't know, you can find quizzes and videos online to help you find out. If you're just starting, you're probably A1 or A2. If you can talk about the past, today, and the future easily, you're B1 or B2. If you're really good at saying exactly what you mean and you can use fancy words or idioms, you're probably C1 or C2. So what is the step that I want you to avoid? Before I tell you, I'm going to tell you a short story. Whilst living in Poland, I spent three years being an English tutor for an online platform. And because this was an online platform, I didn't get calls from students all the time and I would sometimes set up my laptop with a clean shirt sitting next to it and I would renovate the apartment. And whilst painting a wall or laying down wood floorboards, a call would come in and I would rush to my computer, all smelly and sweaty, take my dirty shirt off and put that nice shirt that was nearby the computer on and I would answer the call. Now, a lot of different students connected with me and a great number of them had problems using even the most basic of tenses, whether it was past, present or future. They would say things like, I go shopping yesterday and I buy food and presents for Christmas, when they meant they bought presents and food for Christmas. By the way, making mistakes is okay. It's how you learn. But knowing these students had a grammar problem, I would start teaching them a grammar course through the school's platform. And I also knew a lot of these people studied English at a public school in Poland where they teach you way more grammar than they ever taught me in an Australian public school. This method brought in mixed results, mostly not very good. So after many experiences like this, I started questioning myself whether I'm a bad teacher. But eventually, I realized that a student's ability to use grammar correctly is not attributed to whether they understand a certain rule or not. There are just so many complex rules to memorize and so the reason I'm telling you this is I want you to stop studying grammar. It's just difficult to remember and use these rules whilst you're trying to express your ideas in the middle of a conversation with someone. The IKO English test does not ask you to recite grammar rules. It wants you to use them correctly. So stop learning grammar rules. So how should you be learning instead? English is my second language. And right around the time when I was beginning my university degree of civil aviation, me and my two university friends rented a house together right on the final approach path to runway 03 at Parafield Airport in South Australia. As a student, I was happy to be surrounded by the sounds of an airport, primarily used by small general aviation aircraft. Cessna 172s everywhere, diamond, single and twin engine planes, World War II warbirds, Cessna caravans, private jets. During that time, I had a good level of English, but I didn't feel very confident reading books in English and I wanted to fix this. 
The problem was that even though my English was okay, I mean, I could go and fly and communicate, I didn't understand all of the vocabulary in books. And worst of all, reading more than two pages of a book made me fall asleep. Intuitively, I make myself keep going. And what I mean by that is I would read books without a complete understanding. Sometimes I would intuitively understand a new word from context. Then the more books I read, the more I would begin to understand translating words from time to time. Little by little, my vocabulary got better. I could express my thoughts much better. And the reason I'm telling you this is that years later, when I became an English tutor, I encountered a lot of resistance when I asked my English students to start reading texts they didn't fully understand. They said they wanted to understand it all on their first try. Trust me though, imagine you have a car full of shopping and you want to unload it into your house. You don't put everything in your hands and you bring it in in one trip. Instead, you make a few trips back and forth between the house and the car until you bring everything inside. It's the same with understanding texts. You do it once, you do it twice, you do it 10 times, and each time you take in more. Reading and listening without full comprehension is a common practice amongst language learners worldwide. So, begin reading and listening to things in English, especially when you don't understand everything. So, how can any level of English learner benefit from this? I think there is one big problem with learning grammar. And it's that most people find it boring. You have to ask yourself, what is the goal? Is it to recite the rules? I bet the answer is no. What is the goal? In this situation, it is to become fluent in a language to communicate well, to talk to radio control tower, aviate, navigate, communicate. Our brains aren't very good at retaining detail, think specific grammar rules, but they are much better at recognizing patterns, hearing a sentence a number of times and then noticing a pattern emerge. Listening to a word 15 times and being able to re then repeat that. Nobody teaches babies grammar, yet small kids know how to use it naturally. But remember, consistency is key no matter what level of English you speak. You have to find a way to come back to learning as often as you can, every day if you can. Even if it's just for five minutes per day, and I'm not saying don't study grammar at all. When you become a bit more advanced, you look at the rules from time to time to make sense of things, why they are the way they are. But it's not to learn and remember them. Study grammar when you are interested in it. Study it when you have a curiosity. Why a sentence is that way and not another? If you are a beginner, start simple. Use something like Duolingo. It is designed to feel like a game. And I've been using this app for over a year and a half to teach myself the basics of Spanish. And it's a great way to get you into a habit of learning something every day and treating language learning like a game. Another method is to watch things in English. I remember in the first couple of years of living in Australia, I notoriously watched Top Gear episodes after school. But chances are that if you are watching this video, you are not a beginner. You are most likely an intermediate. And the thing to do as an intermediate is to find creative ways and interesting ways to both read and listen to things in English. This could be 
comic books. This could be reading your favorite book that you have read in the past in your native language. Could be Harry Potter, could be The Hobbit, could be a book that you've enjoyed in your native language that has an English version. This is how I started with books. I found topics I was interested, I was curious about, and off I went. A great trick that I've discovered recently, because it helps you remember more, is to read a book and listen to an audiobook version at the same time. It helps you with pronunciation as well. Finally, find a tutor you can have conversations with. Using a language is the most valuable way to practice. So set a goal of learning minimum five days per week, even if it's only 10 minutes per session. Think, how can you make it fun? Now that we have grammar out of the way, you need to learn how to pronounce things clearly in the cockpit because no amount of excellent grammar will help you if you aren't pronouncing things properly. So watch this video next to find out some pronunciation tips that will help you take your English to the next level.